Hi everyone, it's Sinead with Free Tourists by Foot London. I'm standing outside the Tower of London. I'm right between Tower Hill Gateway Station, I'll show you in a moment, and Tower Hill. Today's journey is into the East End. As you know, any one of you that follow my tours, one of my favorite places in London to guide with so much history. But we are gonna walk along the River Thames. I want to take you into this amazing district. I've only really just discovered myself, and I've been down here the last few weeks, well, a few days actually, finding amazing secret and hidden gems. Today is all about immigration, it's about piracy, it's about execution, it's about some of the oldest Riverside taverns in the United Kingdom. It's also about secret hidden French bistros in beautiful locations where they filmed amazing movies like Legend with Tom Hardy. I'm really excited and enthusiastic about this one because the people I've met here, honestly, I have to say, have been the most welcoming of any in all my videos. Everywhere I've asked to film, they've given me permission. So I'm gonna bring you into some amazing places. Don't leave me, stay tuned. I think you'll be impressed by this. This is gonna be my new favorite neighborhood. This is Wapping. So I've just crossed over the busy intersection there, right exactly where I was, by the Tower Gateway, you guys. And here is the Tower of London and spectacular views in the background of Tower Bridge. Now we're gonna make our way down the steps here. And this takes us in to what appears to be another world. I mean, that's one of the busiest spots in London, as you can imagine, and particularly in August. It's insanely busy around here. I'm gonna bring you to an area that is so quiet and peaceful, and yet no less scenic than the rest. Love this new neighborhood I've just discovered. Now here is St. Catherine's Dock. One of the most beautiful places at nighttime as well to get a drink and a bite to eat. I'm going to take you around here because it's see I wanted to show you parts of this um, but just again I'll have done a detailed tour on St. Catherine Docks recently and we'll put a link up to it and it's almost like we're going to be in a different world we're heading in to the area known as Wapping now Wapping is an East London district and as I already said, had a massive maritime history down here. This is the area where thousands of immigrants were the first set foot on English soil, particularly the Jewish community, at Iron Gate Stairs, which is located around the northeast of Tower Bridge. Some of these people were so grateful to land here that they kissed the ground upon arrival. Finally being able to be in a country where they could worship freely without fear of religious persecution. So you'll see the majority of the buildings along here are brick buildings, but tall structures, warehouses converted into luxury apartments, attracting some of the young urban professionals are what we call nowadays the yuppies but a far cry from its CD past it attracted criminals and cutthroats and smugglers and pirates and bless them the immigrants amongst them no doubt my own Irish people when I first landed here too prisoners were also that had been condemned to banishment in Australia would have boarded the boats along the river here as well so we're going to be heading out towards Wapping High Street shortly but first I want to bring you back out onto the Thames path from the river here folks on the north bank look at this and not a soul in sight everywhere is wharf 
Butler's Wharf. You have all the Riverside Wharfs along here. Now, I do want to ask you a question. I had heard, but apparently it is incorrect, that wharf stood for warehouse at river front. Somebody corrected that for me. But whoever you were, would you mind telling me what exactly it means then? We know there were warehouses on the riverfront. This one is Tower Bridge Wharf. Right, let's get a proper view of this, folks. I mean, you can effectively walk all the way along the riverfront. Look at these views. Wait till you see this. So we're on the north bank of the River Thames, approaching what's called Wapping High Street. These luxurious apartments overlooking the River Thames. I'm always so jealous. Because not only would I like to be here in the summertime, I'd also like to be here in the winter when it's a stormy evening. Now, this is where I wanted to take you up here to see this beautiful restaurant up here. You cannot afford not to have something to eat in here. Riverside views, open glass windows. This is Smith's speciality fish restaurant. Fresh fish delivered every single day from Cornwall. They do have steaks as well. It's a Michelin star restaurant. So you would be re required to dress, well, smart casual, I guess. No formal ball gowns or anything. I, of course, was in the flip-flops and leggings when I arrived. And that's because I was researching this tour. So this is the wonderful Smith's, a Michelin star restaurant. You cannot miss this. I had a look at some of the food they were serving in there yesterday. It was magnificent. But we're going to come down here again. And I want to connect back out onto the high street. Because very shortly, we will be visiting one of the oldest pubs in London with so much history. Now, I can do a tour, you know me, without mentioning execution. So shortly, we'll be talking all about what was known as execution dock. So we're gonna get down here, back out onto the stunning warehouses. Former warehouses. Now, high-end luxury apartments that I won't be able to afford, but I would 100% move to this area of London. It's amazing along the river and the South Bank is all tourist sites, the London Eye. And it is beautiful, but I'd rather something a bit more traditional like this, which you'll have to admit is pretty special. Look at these buildings. Zanzibar Court, and that is your entrance in down there to Smith's restaurant. Right, let's keep going. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here till we get to one of our very famous locations. Now we're going to be going in and out of some amazing places along the way. nestled into this amazing corner is the town of Ramsgate pub steeped in history we are of course going to be taking a look inside but first I'm going to be bringing you down 
to one of the most historic places in London. We're heading down the steps of Wapping Old Stairs. Now down this rather seedy looking corridor, we are actually gonna take steps down to where at low tide, you can actually sit down on one of the private beaches here in London. This is Wapping Old Stairs, and there has been a tavern on the site since 1545, folks. It's through this, in this very alleyway, where it's, well, it's said that Captain Thomas Blood, the man who stole, the only man ever to steal the crown jewels, was apprehended, attempting to get away from London via the steps here, and down onto this, what we like to call, oh, still high tide, little private beach. Right, so it is now almost three o'clock. So we're going to have to wait another hour or so. But I want you to notice the difference between both. In the next hour, I'm going to be able to take you down when the tide is lower onto one of the secret beaches in London. These are also the steps where convicts who would have been kept in the basement of this very pub in prison cells will be banished to Australia. And those convicts will be brought down and down these steps to board their ships, never to see the United Kingdom again. Now we all wish we could get to Australia free of charge. How does that sound? Right. So just as we're waiting for low tide, let me just walk you through here. Now there's quite a few people inside, so again, I don't want to be intrusive, but I want to take you through the 16th century tavern. And it was named after the Ramsgate fishermen who left their catches here before being taken to Billingsgate Fish Market. It's also in this very pub in 1688 that the famous Judge Jeffreys, James II's unpopular Lord Chancellor, was seized as he tried to flee in the continent, trying to avoid the troops of William III. He reportedly disguised himself as a sailor, but he was recognized actually by one of the criminals he had previously convicted. He begged for mercy from the mob, but Judge Jeffreys hadn't shown too much mercy to hundreds of other people he condemned to execution at Execution Dock. He was eventually imprisoned in the Tower of London. He died of kidney disease in 1689. Now they had originally buried him in St. Peter of Vincula, the church in the tower. However, they removed his body. He's now buried in St. Mary Alderman Berry. But I just wanted to show you the atmosphere of this gorgeous pub that dates all the way back to the 16th century. It's also, hi Sid, it's also in the basement of this very pub where criminals were kept. And those criminals that were imprisoned in the basement of the pub eventually will head down the steps onto the River Thames to be deported to Australia. Now these are some of the pictures inside. There's Judge Jeffries on the right. I don't want to disturb the locals. They're having a nice pint. Now, as it's such a beautiful day, you have this gorgeous smoking, well, not a smoking terrace, no smoking, rather. This outdoor terrace here, where you can enjoy a drink whilst waiting for low tide or high tide. Look at this beautiful view right here, you guys. So that's why I'm still waiting for low tide, but it's getting better. See the steps there. Now this charming local is local to a lot of East End Londoners and you can get some gorgeous views of the terrace here in the Ramsgate Tavern. So let's head back down the steps and into the pub itself and talk a little bit more. Not the actual site, but what a site that is quite similar to what would have been in the area known as Execution Dock. The execution of Captain Kidd, the very famous pirate, William Kidd, took place in 1701. Okay, three hours later, two gin and tonics and a fish and chips in. We're going to head down these stairs. Now, as previously mentioned, Captain Thomas Blood 
He only managed successfully, well, got out of the Tower of London with the crown jewels, actually attempted to escape from here and he was apprehended. He was put in front of King Charles II, the Merry Monarch, who, as we all know, had a sense of humor and believed that he found it quite amusing at the brazen attitude of Captain Thomas Blood. He actually pardoned him and they gave him land worth 500 pounds in Ireland. Talk about the luck of the Irish. He himself was from County Meath. But look at the difference, you guys. Now, it is quite eerie here as you're heading down. It's hard not to imagine those immigrants that would have taken these steps after being locked up in the cells at the bottom of the town of Ramsgate pub and facing a journey into the unknown. Deportation. And we believe the term POM comes from prisoners of Millbank. Now, another piece of dark history in the area, and particularly why I wanted to take you out here on the beach. Well, look at Barbados in London, ladies and gents. Is, ooh, quite slippy there, nearly slipped, folks. Is along the river here, and we believe between the town of Ramsgate pub and the prospect of Whitby and stay tuned because that's one of the oldest taverns in London. We believe along here, not specifically in this immediate area, was known as Execution Dock. Now for 400 years, the Admiralty had jurisdiction here over the River Thames. If you were convicted of piracy, smuggling or mutiny, it was most likely you would have been executed quite brutally at Execution Dock. Now, Execution Dock is definitely along the banks of the River Thames here. We believe it's actually under Wapping Station now. And over 400 years, execution, particularly of pirates, was pretty brutal. Later on, I'm gonna bring you to the prospect of Whitby, where they have a hangman's noose out the back on the beach at the back of their pub. And that's there to commemorate Judge Jeffries, which we just spoke about. So stay tuned for the prospect of Whitby. But the piracy executions were particularly brutal because the executioner insisted on using a shorter rope. So the neck wouldn't break instantly. And it was a long, excruciating death. Uh, the limbs would fray and flay all over the place. It was known as the Ramsey Dance. And like the executions at Tyburn, people would come on boats. They would line the river here, waiting for the execution. Now, I just wanted to show you the amazing view from here as well. So the short rope, they struggled. After that, it gets worse. The pirates were then gibbeted or put into a gibbet and they were left to hang here until three tides of the River Thames washed over them. When their bodies were removed, they were black and purple. And some people say that's where the name originates from because it's also where they say, uh, people use the expression, what a whopper, bloated and black from the tide washing over the three Thames, um, from the Thames three times rather. Now, one of the most brutal executions that took place here was the execution of Captain Kidd. William Kidd, the famous pirate, who actually had been commissioned by the Admiralty to work arresting pirates. However, he found that it was much more lucrative to become a pirate himself. And it is said, when he had heard about the warrant for his arrest, that he buried his treasure on an exotic island. And we believe that was the inspiration for many of the story, like Treasure Island and the Pirates of the Caribbean. But his execution drew thousands and thousands of people, ladies and gents. His first attempt at executing him was unsuccessful. The rope broke and he smashed to the ground. He started screaming for divine intervention. He should be allowed to live. However, the second attempt, they tarred his body and they put him in a gibbet and they hung him from Tilbury for three weeks, or three months rather, three months as a suggestion, as a warning to future pirates on the way into London. 
that execution piracy wouldn't be tolerated. It's quite unusual to see two sets of steps here. But please be careful. If you do come here, now you often get mug locks here and people looking for treasure. Over the years, they've found a lot of Roman coins, artifacts from the Roman era. And as mentioned, bodies have washed up here over the years. Right, let's continue on. Next, I want to take you across the road because I found something incredible for you. So when I leave the town of Ramsgate pub, and we've spoken quite a bit about execution. Now you'll know from my other execution videos, like the executions at Marble Arch and the Tyburn Tree, and executions at Smithfield's Market, the majority of prisoners were allowed to take a drink en route to execution. And I want to take you down to where it's reputedly the pub where these condemned prisoners would have their last quart of ale before facing their impending execution at Execution Dock. But first I want to show you two very interesting buildings here in the area. See the steeple of that church? That church is St. John of Wapping or St. John the, Evangel the Evangelist Church of Wapping actually dates from the middle, middle of the 18th century. It did not survive World War II, however. A bomb landed on it, apart from a few tombs that survived, and the tower standing, and a handful of tombs in the yard. This is all that remains. But the second part of the church was St. John's School. Now this building predates the church, and you'll see Right here you have infants and boys. And these, there's two separate parts of the school, were charity schools. And it gives you a little bit of information here. St. John of Wapping. And you'll see the two children covering the sections of the girls' school and the boys' school. Now these were charity schools and they were known as blue coat schools because of the blue coat uniforms they would have worn at the time. They were typical of the blue, blue coats that were worn by students in charity schools specifically. Uh, they say the blue was the cheapest dye so you could identify these orphan children by the blue coats that they wore and inside here these schools depended on charitable donations and the kids were trained in domestic skills essentially or the skills that they would need for domestic service a big tradition here and we believe it's where the uniforms where the kids here in the UK still wear uniforms to this day in the schools but where I'm taking you next is down here to what was the Turk's head now the Turk's Head was a traditional alehouse as well, no doubt frequented by all the workers in the area that worked on the docks and on the river. So a very famous pub and it's where we believe the last quart of ale would have been consumed by the condemned prisoners. Look at this charming pub. I mean, Wapping has, honestly, Guiding in London just blows me away every time. Once you're looking for things in London and you discover so many amazing places and wait till I show you what I found. This is mind blowing. It's probably one of the most beautiful little bistros I've ever come across. So what was traditionally an ale house, there's a little bit of history of it. The former public house has a special history. During World War II, it was run by an eccentric landlady called Mog Murphy and stayed open all hours for service personnel seeking news of their loved ones. So it's got its tragic history there as well. But after a vigorous campaign in the 1980s led by Maureen Davis and the Wild Women of Wapping, the Turks Head Company, a charity they set up to improve local life, brought the, bought the derelict building from the council and restored it. The income from the rents of the cafe and stu studios above pays for charitable activities. So I actually wandered in here because it's also 
where they filmed the movie Legend, where Tom Hardy plays the Cray twins and they have a notorious fight inside the building with about six other gang members who come heavily armed. But look what I have found, ladies and gents. I mean, you go in there just because I'm looking for Tom Hardy in the legend and you find this stunning English French slash French bistro, which is run by a wonderful couple called JJ and Philippe. And I just want to take you in here first to show you the, what would have been the former pub section. Another stunning French bistro, which is open daily for breakfast, lunch and for dinner and it's quite possibly one of the most charming East End of London places I have actually found en route. The selection of wines here and food, a hidden gem in the East End, but it has an amazing diverse menu which features smoked almonds, charcuterie boards, an amazing French onion soup, vegan options of course and homemade delicious desserts and I was talking to JJ he actually made all the brunch desserts this morning himself but look at this stunning space completely decorated an independent business and this is where you come for your French I'm drinking coffee there in my little seat just want to show you this little horse box here that's where they serve the coffee from and it's fully heated but what a place for a lovely romantic meal now the boys had um a bit of bad luck they opened it up prior to the pandemic so they had been forced to close just as they had just invested in the business and look at these two famous residents here and this gorgeous okay guys so after leaving that gorgeous little french bistro we're going to make our way now towards Wapping Station. You'll see the sign for it there. And a short skip and a jump from there is also the incredible prospect of Whitby. And I have an amazing tour coming up of that pub for you. Um, I filmed it a little earlier, so that's why I know what I've done <laughs> um, at a time of high tide, but also we had exclusive ac access. So stay tuned for that. I'm just going to stop you here briefly. I wanted to show you the Marine Policing Unit. So this was 1798. So effectively they took over after the jurisdiction of the Admiralty. That was the job now of the Marine Police. And you'll see them up and down the River Thames at all times. Founded in 1798 for over 200 years, police have patrolled the River Thames from this site. Right beside it, the Captain Kidd pub. So another place on the river with amazing views of the River Thames. But I think the most impressive thing about this is how lovely and quiet it is up here. It says I as soon as an airplane goes over my head. Just to give you an idea of the inside Look at that, completely opens up out onto the River Thames. Named after William Kidd, who was executed at Execution Dock in 1701. Might come back and do, oh sorry, might come back and do a separate tour on that pub alone. Obviously it draws a huge amount of tourists to the area. But until then, we are going to make our way to Wapping High Street Station and then on to one of the most legendary of London pubs, the Prospect of Whitby. I'll see you then.